Welcome back. Let's start with this example here. We want to determine if Rolle's theorem can be applied to the function f of x equals x squared plus x minus 12 on the interval from negative 4 to 3. And if it can, if we can apply the theorem, we want to find all the values of c such that the derivative at that point c is equal to 0. And so the first thing that you want to do when you do a problem like this, when we are trying to determine if Rolle's theorem can be applied, is to remember what Rolle's theorem is. And Rolle's theorem says that if this function is continuous and differentiable on the interval, and the y value for each of the endpoints of our interval are the same, then there must be at least one value of c where this is true, where the derivative at that point is equal to 0. So the first thing that we want to check is, is this function continuous? and is it differentiable on this interval? And since our function is a polynomial, we know it's going to be continuous everywhere, so it's going to be continuous on our interval. This isn't a rational function where we might have the potential for an undefined value, and I don't see any absolute value bars here, which is what might cause a point to be non-differentiable on this interval. So now we know that this function is going to be continuous and differentiable on the given interval. And so I'll write that we checked its continuity, and we checked its differentiability. It's always good to make a note of that in your work. And so now the next thing we want to do is to check and see if the endpoints of our interval both have the same y value. We need to make sure that they're at the same height. So we'll plug each of these endpoints into our original function. So we'll have f of negative 4, and that's going to be equal to negative 4 squared plus negative 4 minus 12. And so this will be equal to negative 4 squared, which is going to be 16, and we'll have minus 4 minus 12, and 16 minus 4 will be 12, and 12 minus 12 is 0. So this is equal to 0. And then let's check our other endpoint, 3. So we'll have f of 3, and that will be equal to 3 squared plus 3 minus 12. And then that will be equal to 9 plus 3 minus 12, which would be 9 plus 3 is 12, and then minus 12 would also be equal to 0. So we can check that both of these endpoints have the same result when plugged into this function. So they have the same y value, so they're at the same height. So now we for sure can apply Rolle's theorem to this function on the given interval. If these values were not equal, we could not apply it. So now what we're going to do is to find all the values c such that the derivative at those points is 0. So the next thing we want to do is take the derivative of our function and set it equal to 0. So the derivative f prime of x is going to be equal to the derivative of x squared, which would be 2x, and then we'll have the derivative of x, which we know is going to be 1, so we'll have plus 1, and then the derivative of negative 12 is just 0. So we don't need to write that. And then to solve for our values of c, we're going to set 0 equal to the derivative and change our x to c. So we'll have 2 c plus 1. And now we're ready to solve for our value of c. We'll subtract 1 from both sides and we'll have negative 1 equals 2c. And then if we divide both sides by 2, we'll have c is equal to negative 1 half. And so that's the final answer to this problem. We found that Rolle's theorem could be applied to this function on the given interval. And then we solved for the value of c where the derivative is 0. Let's look at another example. In this next example, we want to do the exact same thing we did with the last problem. We are given a function here. We have g of x equal to x to the fourth minus x squared. And we have an interval for this function from negative 1 to 1. And we want to find all values of c such that g prime of c, or the derivative at those points, is equal to 0 if Rolle's theorem can be applied. So once again, the first thing we want to do is check to see if it's continuous and differentiable on this interval. And once again, just by looking at it, I'm able to tell that it is going to be continuous and differentiable because I don't see a denominator where we might have an undefined value that would cause a break in our function. And I don't see any absolute value bars or a weird exponent that might cause a non-differentiable point. But if you're ever not sure if your function is differentiable on the interval, you can always take the derivative of your function. And then if that derivative is continuous on this interval, then you know it is differentiable because differentiability is basically the continuity of the derivative. And so just to do it a little bit differently, we'll check that real quick to kind of show you how that would work. So if I take g prime of x, that would be equal to 4x to the third power minus 2x, right? We took the derivative of x to the fourth using the power rule. So we have four times x and then one subtracted from our exponent is three. And then the derivative of x squared would be two times x. 
And so if I look at this derivative here, this is also going to be continuous on this interval. There's no denominator here where we might plug in a value that would cause some value to be undefined. So we're all good here. So now we can say that we checked continuity and we can say that we checked the differentiability. All right, so now that we've checked out it is continuous and differentiable on this interval, now we want to check to see if the endpoints both have the same y value or the same output from our function. Because if they don't, then Rolle's theorem doesn't apply. So let's start with negative one. We'll have g of negative one is equal to negative one to the fourth power minus negative one squared. And that will be equal to one minus one, which is equal to zero. And then if we plug in positive one, we're actually gonna get the same result, right? We're gonna have one to the fourth power minus one squared, which is also equal to one minus one, which is equal to zero. And so in this case, our two values are the same, and so we're good. Our endpoints have the same height or the same y value. And so now we can apply Rolle's theorem. We can solve for all values of c such that the derivative at those points is equal to zero. And so we actually already took the derivative of our function. So all we have to do now is set it equal to zero and swap out our x's for c. So we'll have that zero is equal to four c cubed minus two times c. And so now if we wanna solve for c in this case, I see that we have a common factor of 2c in both of these terms. So if I pull that out, we'll have zero is equal to 2c times 2c squared minus one. And so I did that by pulling 2c out of this term. And so all we're left with is one, right? 2c times one would be 2c. So if I take out the 2c, I'm left with one. And then we took out 2c out of this function. So we're left with two because two times two is four. And we took out one c from our c cubed to just be left with c squared. And so now we can set each of these equal to zero. So we'll have 2c is equal to zero, which means c is equal to zero. And then with this term, we will have that 2c squared minus one is equal to zero. And so if we add one to both sides, we'll have 2c squared equal to one, and then we'll have c squared equal to one half. And if we took the square root of both sides, we would find that c is equal to plus or minus square root of one half. And you could reduce that to just be one divided by the square root of two, and then maybe you wanna rationalize it, but it's fine to keep it in this form. I will rewrite it though. I'll write that this is equal to plus or minus one over the square root of two. And I hope that you're fine with that answer. You could rationalize this by multiplying the top and the bottom by the square root of two, but I'm personally not that picky and I'm just gonna keep it at this. So we found that our two values of c are going to be c equals zero and c equals plus or minus one divided by the square root of two. In fact, I lied, it's three values of c, right? We have one value of c here and we have two values of c here being positive one divided by the square root of two and negative one divided by the square root of two. So there's actually three values of c for this function on the given interval where the slope is zero. Let's do another example. All right, next we wanna determine if Rolle's theorem can be applied to this function. We have f of x equals four minus the absolute value of x minus four. And we're gonna be looking at it on the interval from zero to eight. And if it can be applied, we will find our values of c where the derivative of those values is zero. So what do you notice about this function? Well, for one thing, it has absolute value bars. And the one thing that we know about absolute value functions is that they're going to have a point where the function is not differentiable. So the moment you see absolute value bars, that's a red flag. You should see that immediately and go, wait, this might not be differentiable on our given interval. And so if we were to graph this function, right, if we had our coordinate plane here, we had our x-axis and our y-axis, the graph of this function would look like this. We have our point four, and we also have four up here, and the vertex will be right here, and then our function will continue from there. And so what we see from this graph is that we have a point that is not differentiable at x equals four. And if you're ever not sure, right, if you're not very good at graphing functions like this, just look at what is inside your absolute value bars. In this case, I see x minus four. Whatever makes the part inside the absolute value bars equal to zero, which in this case would be four, right? Four minus four would be zero. That's the value of x where this function's not going to be differentiable. And so is x equal four in our interval? Well, if we look at it, it's from zero to eight. So the answer is yes, four is in between zero and eight. And so in this case, Rolle's theorem cannot be applied to the function on the given interval because it's not differentiable for all the points between our endpoints. And just a quick note, it's very rare that this will happen, but if your point where the function's not differentiable is one of your endpoints of your interval, you're still going to be okay. You can still move on with Rolle's theorem 
given that everything else checks out. You should only be worried when the point that is not differentiable is between your endpoints. So just keep that in mind. And so in this case, this is going to fail a differentiability test. So we'll have differentiability and add as a fail. And so then we would say that Rolle's theorem does not apply to f of x. And then if you want to be more specific, you could say it is not differentiable, and I'm going to abbreviate it at x equals 4. In fact, you probably do want to say that so you give some sort of reasoning as to why Rolle's theorem does not apply for this function on the given interval. And so that would be the answer to this particular problem. Let's look at another one. So next we want to determine if Rolle's theorem can be applied to the function h of x is equal to x to the 2 thirds power plus 1. And that's going to be on the interval from negative 8 to 8. And if we can apply it, we want to find all values of c such that the derivative at those points is 0. Now this one is a little bit tricky too. Let's look at what our function is here. We have x to the 2 thirds power. And what I want you to know is if you see a function where a variable has an exponent that is a fraction, like 2 thirds, I would check to see if it's differentiable by taking its derivative. That's what you should do. Because remember, differentiability is just the continuity of the derivative. So if we take the derivative of this function, we'll have h prime of x is equal to 2 thirds times x to the power of 2 thirds minus 1. Remember, we want to subtract 1 from our exponent when using the power rule. And then we would add the derivative of 1, which is just 0. So I'm not going to bother to write that. But if we simplified this, we would then have that this is equal to 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third power. And then if we move this x term with a negative exponent to the denominator of this value so that the exponent would be positive, then we would have that this is equal to 2 divided by 3x to the 1 third power. Now, this is what we want to check. To see if this function is differentiable on this interval, we need to check to see if this derivative is continuous on this interval. And so what you need to ask yourself is, is there any point on this function where there might be an undefined value or some kind of break in our function? And so what's going to make this function undefined? Well, if I plug zero in, right, if you plug zero into your denominator here, we're going to have zero in our denominator. And so two divided by zero is an undefined value. You cannot divide by zero. And so because of that, this function is not continuous at the point x equals zero which means that our original function is not differentiable at the point x equals zero, right? So if the derivative is not continuous at a certain point, then the original function where that derivative came from is not differentiable at that point. And so because of that, Rolle's theorem is not going to apply to this function on the given interval because x equals zero is between our two endpoints. It is within this interval from negative eight to eight, zero lies between those two points. And so because of that, we cannot apply Rolle's theorem to this function because it is not differentiable for the values between the two endpoints of our interval. So once again, we'll write that we checked our differentiability and it failed. And so we would say that Rolle's theorem does not apply to h of x. And then let's write why. Let's give it a reason. We'll say that it is not differentiable at x equals zero. And so that would be the answer that I would write for this problem in this case. All right, next we want to see if Rolle's theorem can be applied to the function f of x equals sine x. And this is going to be on the interval from zero to pi. And so the first thing that we want to do is we want to check if this function sine x is continuous and differentiable on our given interval. Now, maybe you just know that our sine function is continuous between zero and pi because you can plug in all kinds of values between those two values. But if you didn't, you could always graph the sine function and you would see that it is continuous between zero and pi. And then for differentiability, if you were not sure, the derivative of sine x is cosine x, and cosine x is also continuous from zero to pi. And if you were not sure about that, you could also graph cosine x. But for the sake of time, just note that sine x is a continuous and differentiable function everywhere. And so it would be both of those things on this interval as well. So we checked continuity and we checked differentiability. And since now that we checked both of those, we can check to see if our endpoints have the same y value or have the same height on our function. And so that's the next thing that we will check. First, we'll start with zero. So we'll have f of zero is equal to sine of zero. And we know that sine of zero is equal to zero. And then let's try pi, our other endpoint. So we'll have f of pi is equal to sine of pi. And sine of pi is also equal 
to zero. And so in that case, this checks out. Both of those values are the same. They both have the height of zero or the y value of zero. And so now Rolle's theorem applies and we can solve for our values of c such that the derivative is equal to zero. And so let's take the derivative of sine x. We'll have f prime of x. And I believe I already mentioned this, but the derivative of sine is cosine. And then if we set this equal to zero and change our x to c, so we'll have cosine c. And if that's a little confusing, you can always write your little parentheses here to remind you what that is, that this is cosine of x or cosine of c. And now we can solve for our values of c. And so what we just have to do is ask ourselves, where is the cosine function equal to zero on this interval? And so in this case, the only value between these two endpoints where cosine is going to be equal to zero is going to be pi over two. So c is going to be equal to pi divided by two. And so hopefully you're familiar with your trig functions by now that you would be able to find this. If not, I would recommend that you look up a tutorial to solving simple trig equations. And at the current time that I'm recording this, unfortunately I do not have a tutorial of my own on that topic, but maybe I will in the future. Depending when you're watching this, there might be one now. But for now, just know that cosine is equal to zero on this interval at pi over two. And so that would be our value of c in this case, where the derivative would be zero on the given interval. So Rolle's theorem applied and we found our value of c. Let's look at one more example for this video. So here we want to determine if Rolle's theorem can be applied to the function x squared minus four divided by x minus one on the interval from zero to four. And if it can be applied, we want to find all values of c where the derivative is zero. Now, big red flag here, we have a function that is a rational function. We have a numerator and a denominator. And when you see this, the first thing you want to do is ask yourself what point on this function will give you an undefined value. And that's all determined on your denominator. What value, if you plug it in, is going to make the denominator zero. So if we set the denominator equal to zero, x minus one equal to zero, we will see that if we add one to both sides, x equals one, we see that if we were to plug in one into our function, we would have zero in the denominator and thus this function is not going to be defined at x equals one because you cannot divide by zero. And so we have a discontinuity. Our function is not going to be continuous at x equals one. We have a break in our function. And so before we make any conclusions, let's just quickly check to see if that is on our interval. And yes, it is. From zero to four, that includes the value of x equals one because one is between zero and four. And so we cannot apply Rolle's theorem to this function. And so we were right that we checked for continuity and that failed. So Rolle's theorem cannot be applied to f of x. And then if you want to give the reason, we would say that it is not continuous at x equals one. And so that would be the answer to this problem. We checked to see if Rolle's theorem applied to this function on the given interval, and we found that it didn't, and so we gave a reason why. All right, and so that's all I had for this example video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, that is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.